What's up everybody? My name is Blue Drake and today I want to show off some of the new weapon handling mechanics that are going to be coming to Operation Harsh Doorstop in the next update. Now, if you want to play around with some of these features before they are released, you can go and click the link in the description and purchase the supporter edition of the game. We give access to the work in progress in development build of Operation Harsh Doorstop to everyone who has financially supported development. So this is currently live on the supporter build of the game if you want to go try it out but today we're going to be looking at the new bipod system that we are adding to the game which allows you to deploy any weapon on a variety of different services and I actually think that some of the ways that we have implemented this in addition to the existing features for Operation Harsh Doorstop that are already in the public version of the game are going to make this pretty unique. This is going to be a slightly different system compared to other games that have bipod mechanics. So let's get into talking about what those are. One of the things that separates Operation Harsh Doorstop from a number of other games is our dynamic camera system for aiming down sights. In a number of other games, when you go to aim down sights, the actual animation of bringing those sights up to your eyes is a hard-coded, hand keyframed animation. However, with Operation Harsh Doorstop, we actually use a dynamic camera system that allows you to move the camera around the weapon while you are in different stances. So this is your standard hip fire free aim stance but when you actually go into ADS and you shoulder the weapon you can move the camera slightly around that weapon while keeping that weapon shouldered giving you a variety of advantages in different situations this is particularly useful in close quarters situations because you can switch into a more locked down aim down sight but you can slightly move off bore in order to still have that level of accuracy and control, but without having those sights blocking your vision. And our dynamic camera system where we can dynamically move the camera around the weapon without having a hard-coded hand keyframed animation allows us to do that. Now, the reason I'm bringing this up, even though that feature is technically Sorry, I had to take care of that guy. Even though that feature is technically already in the base free version of the game, is because when we add in bipods, which are currently in the up and coming work in progress version of the game, which supporters have access to, that off bore camera aiming system is actually going to impact how the bipod system works. So when you bipod your weapon onto any surface, you're going to default to this slightly camera detached free aim system. And of course, you can also ADS as well. But one of the things that we found is that our dynamic camera system where you can aim off more still works while you are bipoded. So you can actually switch between all of these different modes, which is going to give you some unique advantages. One of the things our development team discovered while developing and playtesting this new system is how effective it is when you utilize it alongside some of these small features that you encounter in most game environments, especially in tactical shooters. These tiny little kill holes are installed in a variety of bunkers and other parts of the environment, especially trenches and other combat environment pieces that in real life are very effective but in video games are fairly difficult to utilize your weapon is going to collide with the surrounding parts of this kill hole getting the full field of view and having to constantly move around this in order to get a kill shot it's not very effective and it stops you from being able to take full advantage of these features in the environment that originally in real life were very effective for combat now this new bipod functionality combined with our dynamic ads system actually helps to solve this problem pretty significantly since now you can deploy your bipod inside of these kill holes and you can take advantage of the full field of view allowing you to very quickly switch 
targets and pivot inside of these firing ports in order to survey a full area and cover a full area with a machine gun, a rifle, whatever. But since we already have this dynamic camera system, you can still look through this porthole while bipodded in all of the different camera modes. So of course you can ADS, but you can also engage the free aim system, which allows you to do some interesting things. Like for instance, you can actually aim down further than you can ADS, allowing you to like fire down the side of the bunker which I think is pretty cool. But even while you are ADS, if there's an enemy that is close enough, you can also switch to the off board system while still bipoded, allowing you to engage targets in a bipod mode, but not having the sight blocking your vision. And of course, you can still reload the gun while bipoded as well, because I just ran out of ammo. Now, in the update, while weapons with bipods will have certain advantages in terms of stabilization and a couple of other passive perks, you will still be able to take advantage of this feature with any weapon, whether it has a bipod or not. So, for instance, if you want to utilize a kill hole with a rifle, even one without a bipod, you can still do that. which I have found is not only a little bit more realistic, because this is something that you would do in real life, but it allows all of the different classes to be very effective when utilizing these bunkers and some of these other pieces of the environment. So this means that regardless of whether you are using a machine gun or a rifle, you will still be able to brace your weapon on all of these surfaces that you would normally be able to brace your weapon on in real life, letting you get more accurate shots. This could be the sides of trenches or sandbags or even kill holes and bunkers like I showed previously. And I think that this is going to have a drastic impact on gameplay as time goes on. Now, of course, this system is going to have some limitations. You're not going to be able to just brace or deploy every weapon on every surface. And one of the weapon types that is going to have some more limitations is going to be pistols. Pistols are not going to be able to be deployed on surfaces in the same way that rifles or machine guns can be. But another weapon that is actually going to be fairly different when it comes to bracing on different surfaces is your medium-sized rifle. Now, this is something that is actually going to have a little bit more variety in functionality than, say, a large, clunky, bipod-capable machine gun. Because something that you're going to be able to do with medium-sized weapons, like submachine guns and rifles, is not just deploy them on horizontal surfaces, but you will also be able to deploy them on vertical surfaces as well. So you can position them on the edge of doorways or on windows, allowing you to pivot around and actually peek outside of those without exposing yourself too much and getting a little bit more stabilization when shooting. This system for deploying weapons against vertical surfaces is going to be more unique to your medium-sized submachine guns and rifles. You are not going to be able to take a large, heavy, bipoded machine gun and deploy it against the corner of a doorway or a window. But I think that that is going to start making all of these different weapon types much more unique and specialized for their different roles. You're going to have pistols, which will not be able to be widely braced against all of these different surfaces. It's not going to have that accuracy. It's not going to have that versatility, but it's going to be great for personal defense, as it should be. You're going to have your medium weapons, your medium-sized submachine guns and rifles, which may not be as good as a heavy machine gun when it comes to locking down a section of the map, but with their versatility of being able to brace against vertical surfaces like doorways and windows, they are going to be 
great at medium to long range engagements or even getting close into some of these trench networks and bunkers where you can either defensively or offensively deploy against these surfaces and you can actually protect this bunker more effectively but your heavy machine guns, your heavy sniper rifles, which are going to be bigger and clunkier, they're not going to be as good at taking these small CQB environments, but what they will be good at is deploying on a horizontal surface with a bipod and having that high rate of fire, having that high capacity magazine locking down an entire section of the map. That's what those heavy weapons are going to be best for. And that's what they were designed to do. So I'm very excited about all of these new features coming to the game because I think that they are finally going to start incentivizing players to play with all of these different weapons in the way that they were meant to be utilized in real life. I think it's going to be really, really interesting and really, really fun. So as always, if you want to try this out for yourself and you want to support the project, click the link down in the description, go pick up the supporter build, and you can go play the update preview, which is going to have all of these features available for our supporters to try out, see how it's coming along. And of course, if you want to play the current version of the game for free, it's on Steam. Go download it. costs you nothing. And hopefully I'll see you guys in the next video. Remember to subscribe if you want to see more videos like this because I'm going to be uploading a lot of Operation Harsh Doorstop content in the coming days. And these videos of mine don't usually get as many views, so subscribing and pressing that notification bell, that means a lot to me because I want all of the people who are really interested in this project to be paying attention over the next couple of weeks because there's going to be some awesome things coming down the pipeline. All right, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.